lists are the heart of grasshopper. Take a look. We have five items. That's what we call a list. Item 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The index values are 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Interesting enough, the last item of a list is index minus 1. There you go. Index minus 1. The first item, index 0. The last, minus 1. So let's work with a list. How many items do we have? What is the index value? What is the order? And how can we select one of them? As we can see, I have a closed curve and an open curve. Let me open my grasshopper. And under params, I'm going to drag and drop a curve. Let me right click and select the circle. I am going to the curve tab, division, and divide this circle. How many times? Let us create a numeric slider. Double click from 4 to 10 divisions. I'm going to set the numeric slider to 8. Let me connect to N and now we have 8 divisions and how many points? Well, let us find that out. Sets list list length. Drag and drop one of these. We can calculate how many points we have in this list. Yes, we do have 8 and let us print the value. Params, panel, let me scale it just a little bit and connect this value to the panel. Let me change the font so that it's a little bit more clear. Perfect. We have eight items. In this case, eight points. The index value grows from 0 to 7. And let us see how these points are organized. Display, list, list, points. Show me how the points are organized. Drag and drop. Connect the list of points to the point list component. And notice that by default, it doesn't have any values. The size, I'm going to set it to 0 0.4. 0 0.4. I'm working in inches. So, let me connect this one. And there you see the index value of the first item. The first point is equal to 0 and so on. Now. Let us select, let us select the other curve. Right click, set one curve. Let me select the open curve. Oh, look at that. We divided in eight segments. But look at the number of points. So you do have to calculate sometimes how many items there are in a list. Let us see how to select one item from a list. But before that, before that, 
let me show you. If we go back to sets, list, and select reverse, reverse the list, let me show you what happens. You select the list of points. Let me switch and select the close circle. There we have the index value. Now, if we connect the reverse list to the point list, I want you to see, I want you to see what happens. It goes in the direction of the clock. So I reverse the list. Perfect. Now that we know how to do that, let us go back to sets select the list and there you have it list item drag and drop one of these components which which list do i want to select an item from i want to select it from here there and the index value that I want to enter, be careful, be careful with this. Click, click. I am going to type minus 8 to 8. From minus 8 to 8. Hit enter. And if I connect this numeric slider to my list item, Notice, notice the item that I am selecting. Let me set it to zero. And so that you can see this a little bit more clearly, I am going to visit the Surface tab, drag and drop, and a sphere. Set the value of the radius to point 25 to make it smaller and connect the list item that's the point that we are selecting from our list connect that to the sphere now let me zoom in and show you this is index 0 index 1 index 2 and we are displaying with the point list the reversed list. So let me delete this one and connect the original list to the point list. All right. So here we go back. This is item one, index zero. Item 2, index 1, and so on. But, as I told you, if we go to minus 1, this is the last item on our list. So don't forget, you can go positive with the list item, or you can go negative and select backwards. I hope this helps a lot in understanding how to select items from a list. Let us do a small exercise. First, under sets, drag and drop a series. The minimum value, click click, will be in between 1 and 5.0. The step is going to be the same. So let me copy and paste this numeric slider. And how many? Oh, let's make it small. From 2 to 6. 
So I am going to connect the start value, the step, and how many numbers. I'm going to set this one to 5. If you want to see what type of list of numbers we just created, drag and drop a panel. Let me right click, set the font, and there is my list of numbers. Now that I have that, how about if we go back to sets, list, reverse, and reverse this list? Let me copy paste the panel, and there you have the new list. So from 1 to 5, and from 5 to 1. Perfect. All right, those two, I want to go to sets, three, and I am going to use, I am going to use merge, merge this list and this list. How many numbers do I have? Sets, list, list, length. So I have more or less 10 numbers. Perfect. Now that I have this, let me create a series with this number. All right. And I am going to use, I am going to use these numbers to go to vectors and create a list of points. Drag and drop the point, connect this list to Z, and notice, notice that now we can decrease or increase. Increase the step there, the start value, and we are changing only, only these values over here. But now that we have the points, we can go to curves, select primitives, and select a polygon. And we are going to create a polygon at each one of these locations, there we have the polygons. But this is the unique part of creating new lists. I am going to use this list as the input for the radius. There. And I can change the number of edges. Click, click. The minimum value will be 3 for a polygon, the max 8 for this exercise. So we can connect this one over here, set it to 4, and there you go. So now I can change the step, the start, and how many I want there. Right. Finally, I could go back to surface and loft all these polygons. Perfect. There we have something a little bit interesting with few steps.